Welcome to the chemisode on biomolecules about carbohydrates. This is the one and only carbohydrates video I am going to do for carbohydrates because it's a relatively small section. So let's go look at carbohydrates, shall we? So the first thing you need to know about carbohydrates is that carbohydrates are also commonly known as of CNH2NON. So therefore they have twice as much hydrogen as they have carbon and oxygen. This is a general formula for carbohydrates or sugars. Carbohydrates can be broken into three categories, monosaccharides, disaccharides, which are on the next page of your notes, and um, polysaccharides, which are on the next page of your notes after disaccharides. The first thing we're gonna look at is obviously monosaccharides um, because they are the simplest and the best. Not the simplest and the best, they're just the simplest. Basically, you have three monosaccharides that we deal with, fructose, glucose, and galactose. They all have the formula of C6H12O6. All these monosaccharides have the same formula. However, they have a little bit of a different structure. The different structure is shown here between glucose and fructose. These are structural isomers. They're things with the same, um, what are they called? The same formula, but different structure. Glucose has the six ring, like a, um, a six membered ring, whereas fructose has a five membered ring, okay? They have the same formula, but just remember that the fructose here has a CH2OH here. So this carbon, is kind of out of the loop and this is joined up this way. So it's only a five membered ring on fructose and a six membered ring on glucose. These are your basic building blocks for the next two types of carbohydrates. The basic building blocks for um, disaccharides and polysaccharides. Let's have a look at disaccharides. Disaccharides are basically two um, monosaccharides joined together. There's three that we mainly, mainly deal with and one that we're gonna focus on. Maltose is two glucoses joined together. Sucrose is one glucose and one fructose joined together. And lactose is one glucose and one lactose joined together. I'm gonna to focus on sucrose because this is probably, in my opinion, the most important and the one that um, you're gonna deal with mostly in your VC studies. You need to understand um, you're probably nice to commit some of these to memory, what maltose is and what lactose is, but the most important probably is sucrose here because it's in your data booklet. Anyway, before we get to the data booklet, let's look at it here. This is from your data booklet. This is sucrose, okay? It is um, a two disaccharide because it has one here of glucose and one here of fructose. Let's have a look at how this thing is made. It's made from a condensation reaction between two OH groups. So what happens is you get two monosaccharides and they come together and join a disaccharide by joining where we have two OH groups. Here we have glucose and here we have fructose. What you can see is if you look at sucrose from your data booklet, the two OH groups are one here and one here. What's happened, these two guys have come together and formed sucrose and water, okay? Why do I write it this way? Why have I shown you this? Because what we can do is from our data booklet of sucrose, this compound is in your data booklet, we can actually deduce what the formulas for glucose and fructose are, okay? Remember glucose is your six-membered ring, fructose is your five-membered ring. All we need to do is slice down our linkage here, which is a, um, an ether linkage or a glycididic linkage, and form these two monosaccharides. The important thing we need to um, get across from this slide is how to slice sucrose up into your monosaccharides. And that's by cleaving our ether or glycididic linkage and adding in our water. So obviously an OH on both ends of it. So you should practice looking at your data booklet in sucrose's form and thinking about what a hydrolysis reaction bringing it back into your two monosaccharides is. Remember, forming the disaccharide is a condensation reaction between the two OH groups, but 
The other way around is a hydrolysis where you're breaking your sucrose up into your two monomers. That is what we deal with in polysaccharides. The last one is to do with um, polysaccharides. So let's have a look at them. Oh, obviously, this is from your VC data booklet, information that you should know. So polysaccharides. Polysaccharides is what many sugars, poly means many, saccharides means sugars, so many sugars joined together. They're formed basically from a whole bunch of monosaccharides combining with your OH groups. Okay, you can think about it with this general formula where you have an n number of monosaccharides. If you join those together, what you'll have is a polysaccharide with one less water than you have here. So what you'll need to look at is, for example, if we're going backwards, if we're hydrolyzing or doing a hydrolysis reaction where we're breaking a polysaccharide up, what we need to do is add in one less water than we have monomers for. So if our polysaccharide contains 400 monomers, it will take 399 waters to completely hydrolyze it. That being said, if we had 400 monomers and we wanted to make a polysaccharide, we'd have 399 waters created. Okay, so it's just that n minus one is your number of waters for however many um, monomers that you have. A few interesting different types of polysaccharides are shown here in your um, notes. You have starch formed from glucose, glycogen formed from glucose, and cellulose also formed from glucose. Even though they're all formed from glucose, they have slightly different roles and slightly different structures. You don't really need to know the structure, you don't need to know that, um, but you do need to know the roles that they have. Starch is used or used as an energy source for us, but it's used as an energy store in plants. You know that um, starch is formed in um, photosynthesis, so you should understand how the plants use starch and how we can use starch. So we can eat the starch from the plants or the plants can use it as an energy store as well. Glucogen is basically what we metabolize starch as. So glucogen can be used as an energy store in animals and can be used for quick bursts of energy in animals as well, such as humans. Cellulose is the um, interesting one because even though it's made from glucose in the same way as starch, the structure of cellulose means that it's used in a different way. It's used for cell structure in plants, so in your cell wall and in your stems and stuff like that. But what's interesting about cellulose is we cannot digest it, so we can't get the energy from cellulose. Even though um, we might eat a whole bunch of celery, because celery um, contains a large amount of cellulose and not starch, we don't get the energy from it. So you need to understand that starch is your energy store in plants, but cellulose is only for your structure, and we can't actually metabolize cellulose. So it's basically a form of fiber for us. If you do VCE biology, um, you should know all about those type of things anyway. But for VCE chemistry, just remember starch, made from glucose, used as your energy storage um, in plants and energy um, source for us. And cellulose is used for structure in plants, but cannot be used as an energy source for humans. That is all I'm going to do on carbohydrates. So just a little quick little recap. We've looked at, um, whoop, going too far back here. Oh, we've looked at monosaccharides, um, the structure of two of those. We looked at disaccharides, how we can use our data booklet to find our monosaccharides, what they look like. And finally, we looked at polysaccharides and some of the interesting in, um, types of polysaccharides and the idea of how many waters are required to hydrolyze um, a certain polysaccharide. Next up is a section on proteins, which is going to be quite a large section. We're going to split it into two parts. So the first part will just be looking at the structure of proteins and the second one looking at more so the uses. So stay tuned to those. Um, and if you have any questions, comments or interesting facts that you want to share with us, please join the Edmodo group and you can comment and you can look at all the worksheets that I put up there for my class 
and you can also have a crack at doing them yourself. There's also questions of the day. So every day I put up a question and if you answer that properly, you'll get a, a badge, a virtual badge. So until next time where we look at proteins, take it easy.